Buying dividend-paying assets is a great way for investors to earn a steady return. However, there's more to it than just selecting a stock or fund with a high yield and collecting great profits. By purchasing an asset for only the high yield, you could actually lose much of, if not all of your money you invested. There's more you should know about dividend investing that can help lower your risk and create reliable income with long-term, generational wealth. These are 12 main points all investors should be aware of. Watch to hear number one, which could potentially help you earn hundreds of thousands of dollars more. My name is Chris, and I help teach people about money, personal finance, and investing. If you're interested in improving your financial future, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if this video is helpful. Number 12. Dividends are an important part of overall returns. Over many decades, dividends have accounted for more than 40% of the total returns of the S&P 500. The relationship between dividends and capital gains hasn't been consistent on a year-to-year -year basis, but they do work together to provide a combination of growth and income over time. Capital gains tend to be considerably larger percentages of returns during bull markets when prices are way up, while dividends are a larger percentage of returns during bear markets when prices are down. Taking advantage of both forms of income can help provide a more balanced portfolio in all market cycles. Number 11. They come in various frequencies. Dividends are most commonly paid on a quarterly basis, every three months, whether it be from an ETF or a single stock, but companies pay their dividends on all different schedules. Stocks like Realty Income and AGNC and funds like SPHD that pay monthly dividends are popular for their monthly income, which can make it easier to budget for people relying on regular payments. Those monthly payments are also beneficial because you don't need to wait to receive them and they can be reinvested much quicker. Conversely, a company like Disney only distributes dividends twice per year. Number 10. Dividends are taxed differently. We all know there are many moving parts when it comes to taxation. Different jobs, investments, accounts, and seemingly everything is taxed in a different form and dividends are no exception. Depending on your annual income and tax bracket, your dividend income could be entirely tax-free. For example, single taxpayers with a taxable income of $40,400 or less will be at a 0% tax rate for qualified dividends even if the investments are held in a taxable brokerage account. Due to the complexity of paying taxes, it's recommended to consult a CPA. Number 9. High payout ratios are red flag. Dividends are paid to share a portion of a company's success with patient shareholders. At least that was their original intention. It's important for owners of individual stocks to keep an eye on the payout ratio, aside from other key financial fundamentals. The payout ratio is simply the amount of money the company pays to its shareholders in relation to its profit. If the company's average earnings per share is $10 and the annual dividend is $7, the payout ratio is 70%, pretty high. Various experts recommend sticking with stocks that keep their payout ratio to manageable levels, around 50% or so. Companies generally try to maintain consistent and rising dividends, but if the earnings aren't rising accordingly, this could lead to a rising payout ratio and could be a sign of a bigger problem. Number 8. The power is in reinvestment. When you see the regular dividend payments hit your account, it can feel like the money can be spent. The truth is, reinvesting the dividends is where the real growth is going to come from. Let's assume you purchase 100 shares of a stock trading at $100 per share. At the time of purchase, the stock pays a 5% dividend and its share price and dividend yield are both expected to grow at 5% annually. After 25 years, your initial $10,000 investment would have grown to $59,000 had you not reinvested the dividends. By comparison, it would have grown to $115,000 had you reinvested the dividends. Take a look at this example of the power of dividend reinvestment in the S&P 500. Number 7. Aristocrats and kings offer stability. When an S&P 500 company meets certain criteria pertaining to a long history of dividend payments, it can be deemed a dividend aristocrat or a dividend king. In order to become a dividend aristocrat, a company must consistently pay a dividend and increase its payout annually for 25 years. A dividend king is a company that consistently pays a dividend and increases it for 50 years. These stocks offer stability because these secure companies will likely continue to distribute profits in the future. This certainly isn't always the case, as recently shown by AT&T. AT&T had a record of 36 years of dividend increases before slashing its payments in 2021. 
You can purchase an ETF composed solely of aristocrats or kings if you choose. Number 6. Dividends can get cut. It's important to remember that dividends are a result of earnings, and if the earnings of a business decline, chances are that its dividend eventually will too. Kodak, JCPenney, and Radio Shack, among many others, stop paying their dividend after many years of stability. When companies are healthy with attractive balance sheets, their likelihood of a continued dividend is high. However, companies do fail, and it's important to be leery of this by carefully considering its profitability. Thankfully, investors can avoid this type of loss by doing their research and paying attention to the writing on the wall. Number 5. Certain sectors pay better dividends. There's one main reason some sectors pay higher dividends than others, and that's stable earnings. Telecommunications, utilities, and consumer staples are considered safe and can make money in almost any economy because people aren't going to shut off their power, get rid of their internet, or stop buying toilet paper. They will stop going on vacation and spending on luxuries, though. Sticking with these more stable sectors can increase your chances of earning reliable income. Relying on a sector for stability isn't foolproof, though. Before the housing crisis of 2008, banks too were seen as very reliable dividend payers. Number 4. REITs offer high yields with high risk. Real estate investment trusts pay some of the highest yields in the stock market because of their tax structure. They're required to pay most of their earnings to shareholders in the form of dividends. This is great for dividend yields, but these investments can also carry considerable risk. While you might think real estate is a very secure investment, many of the businesses owned by these real estate companies are very sensitive to the economy. These include retail stores, shopping malls, and office centers, which are heavily impacted when the economy weakens. Furthermore, these companies profit heavily from debt and decreased income can be damaging. Number 3. Quality dividend stocks have more than high yields. The key to achieving profitability with dividend investing lies in more than just buying a stock or fund that pays a high dividend. A variety of factors should be considered when looking at dividend stocks, including earnings and sales history, company debt, dividend reliability, and dividend increases, among others. Remember to keep an eye on these figures periodically to make sure you're not hanging on to a failing company and always pay attention to the writing on the wall. Number 2. Dividends used to be more relevant. Believe it or not, investors used to primarily focus on dividends and hardly consider capital appreciation. Before the Great Depression, stocks were expected to yield more than bonds to compensate for the higher risk of these equities. To put this into perspective, bond yields in the 1920s were somewhere around 4-6%. to Capital appreciation was still understood, but it was seen as mostly speculation. Number 1. Dividends may mean lower growth. Just because a security pays a dividend doesn't mean it's free money. Generally, a company won't pay a dividend if they're able to reinvest the money themselves and earn large profit. When they decide they can't reasonably invest all their profits for the returns they were previously able to achieve, they distribute them to shareholders. When a company begins paying dividends, some investors see that as a sign of slowing growth. Put simply, Dividends commonly, but definitely not always, mean lower overall returns because the company no longer has the ability to make the highly profitable investments it once did. This is why you see older, slower-growing companies like IBM and Coca-Cola paying dividends. Growth stocks historically provide higher returns over a long period of time. Making the best choice for your portfolio could mean the difference of hundreds of thousands of dollars or more. Dividend-paying investments are popular and for good reason. Remember that there's no free lunch and every strategy has its pros and cons. If you're currently investing in dividend stocks or are considering it, take note of these important points to maximize potential profits.